Hello everyone, this is Shadow the Rat, and today I'm going to talk about rat aggression towards humans. While rats are widely known for being the small pet least likely to bite, there are always going to be exceptions to that rule. When dealing with aggression though, you have to remember that it's a symptom of a deeper problem. Rats can bite because they're scared, feel threatened, are hormonal, in pain, or for other reasons, but they never bite just out of nowhere. So your job when you first notice your rat being human aggressive is to figure out exactly why they're doing this. So now right off the bat, there are two cases that you want to eliminate. If you have a tame rat and they have seemingly become aggressive out of the blue, you probably want to get them checked at the vets for any sort of health problem or any sort of pain. This is because pain in particular can cause biting and so can other things like brain tumors which can drastically alter your rat's personality. Another thing you want to eliminate if you have male rats is hormonal aggression. Now if you have a male rat between 3 and 8 months that just suddenly started biting you, other rats, or both humans and rats, then there's a very good possibility that they are hormonally aggressive. Hormonal aggression is linked to testosterone and does not go away as the rat ages. Instead, you must get the rat in question neutered or chemically altered and then wait around 2 weeks for testosterone levels to fall back to normal. And once they fall back to normal, your rat should go back to being the sweet fluff he was before. I also want to note that if you adopt an older intact male who you've been told is either bad with other rats or humans or both, then there's actually a pretty good chance that he's hormonally aggressive and that a neuter would fix things up. And since neuters are a pretty safe surgery, it's all external, it's a good idea to at least try it. There is one more type of aggression I want to talk about before we move on that you can't really do anything about called maternal aggression. And this basically happens when a female rat has a litter and then they become aggressive over it because of whatever hormonal changes are going on. So during this time, even the sweetest female can become pretty aggressive. And the best thing to do is just let them be, let them take care of their litter. And then once they're done weaning them, they should go back to being the normal sweet rats they are. So now let's move on to aggression that you can actually change with some behavior modification of your own. My favorite way of dealing with human aggression in rats is to have the rat in question do a incompatible behavior. And this just means that I'm going to have the rat do something that they can't do while also biting me. So a good example here would be eating. You can't eat and bite someone at the same time because both of those activities use the mouth. So if your rat is busy eating or licking something, they just can't bite you. Now using this method, you can actually condition a completely different behavior or response towards you by the rat, and you can get them into a habit of not biting. So the key here is prevention and changing the behavior, the root of the behavior. So basically prevention means that you don't want to get bit, and this just means that you need to make sure that when you go into the cage or the rat's personal space that you're not going to be triggering a bite. Good things to know are the rat's body language before they bite. For example, my rat Blackberry, she'd stiffen up and start walking towards you. And if you didn't know her, you might think, okay, she's relaxed and just coming to say hi. But if you knew her well, you noticed that her whiskers were not moving. She was moving in a more stalking sort of position. And when she got close enough, she would lunge and bite. So these are things to look for. You can also look for things like fluffed up fur, which is called piloerection. It's when the hair raises. You can listen for hissing. You can also listen for bruxing, which is a sign that your rat is uncomfortable. Of course, this can also mean that they're happy, but in the case of an aggressive rat, it's probably a warning sign. And you can also look for things like their ears being back, or you can look for them leaning away from you, or basically anything that looks a little off compared to their normal behavior and you need to heed these warnings because they're there for a reason. Every single rat is going to give some sort of warning. It might be really minuscule. For example, berries, like I was saying, she would do all this behavior coming towards you, but of course this is happening really, really fast. I'm talking like two seconds. You need to be able to read it, react, and so on. So the best thing to do if you don't know what behaviors to look for is to err on the side of caution. Make sure your rat is always eating when you're interacting with them in the cage. What I like to do, for example, is give them a metal spoon that has meat based baby food or some other liquid treat on it and I let them start to lick and enjoy themselves and once they really get into it then I start moving things around in the cage making sure to always keep a bit of an eye on them just to make sure that they're not getting too aroused by it and that they're not going to come over and try to attack. You basically want to make sure that it's also a very positive experience which is why you want the food there. If your rat is eating something like meat baby food then they're going to be in a pretty happy state of mind. So with Blackberry, I did quite a bit of this offering food off a metal spoon while I did stuff in the cage or interacted with Blackberry herself. And this basically was just to, as I said before, start to build that positive association and to break that habit of actually going after my hand and 
then biting me. And what I would do is I would take the metal spoon and I would use it to lure her outside the cage because another thing that I found is that if you have your aggressive rat outside the cage, first of all, they're less likely to bite because a lot of rats that seem to be aggressive are actually only cage aggressive, meaning that outside the cage or when you're holding them, they can be really sweet and just fine while inside the cage, they can basically go after you. So if you have a rat like that, it's really beneficial to start building that bond outside the cage and then you can start working towards building it inside the cage as well once they do better with you outside. So with Barry, she would chase my hand outside and inside the cage, so I was kind of stuck there. So I just used the metal spoon in both areas. Outside the cage, she was constantly chasing my hands and trying to bite them for some reason. I have no idea what her beef was with hands, but she just hated them so much. So basically, I always kept them on my body, like above the ground level, so that she couldn't see them. Because if she saw them, that was when she went after them. And I would keep them on my person unless I was actually interacting with Blackberry, in which case I would be giving her treats. And I wouldn't use solids at first because, again, she would just totally ignore the solids, go for my hands, and I would use something like a metal spoon like I was talking about in the cage to offer her some liquid treats. Now one interesting thing about Blackberry was that if you were holding her, she wouldn't bite. This was pretty much the only time she wouldn't bite. So I did a lot of handling and feeding liquid treats while I was holding her to help me build my confidence around her because understandably I was a little bit shaken and to also help her start to associate being held and being with me as very good things. Other than that, I have to say that I was also really respectful of Barry's space. So basically, I stopped invading her space to get her out of areas. I wouldn't try to grab her if she was asleep. I wouldn't grab her out of enclosures. I also wouldn't grab her out of her cage. It was all about leading her out. Even now, Barry can be a little weird if you grab her from a deep sleep. She might lunge at you, and I don't think this is on purpose. This is more like a base reaction, something my other girls don't do but something that Barry seems to innately do that she can't really change. So I just tend to really respect her boundaries even now. So finally, after I used the liquid treat on a metal spoon for a long time, I started to offer it off my knuckle instead. So I would first show her the liquid treat on a metal spoon, let her start licking, then I would take away the spoon and show my knuckles, which would have some liquid treat on it as well. And this way she would transition smoothly from licking the spoon to licking my knuckles. Over time, I stopped using the spoon first and I would just offer my knuckles out to her with some meat baby food. And the reason I use my knuckles is because if your rats bite this area, it doesn't hurt as much and it also doesn't bleed as much. Whereas if they bite your fingers or your hand proper, it's going to hurt so much and you do not want that to happen. It is horrible and it takes forever to heal and I just, I hate being bit on the hand. So anyway, after Barry learned to lick the meat baby food off my knuckles, I switched to giving it off my hands. Again, I reverted to using the metal spoon to help set her up for success. So I would offer her the metal spoon with some meat baby food and then switch in my hand proper for her to lick it off my palm or off my fingers. And then eventually I just gave her my fingers. So yeah, that's basically what I did with Barry. I mean, at this point, she's pretty much come so far. I can reach in the cage and move stuff around without her chasing me or hurting me in any sort of way. And as long as I respect her boundaries, if she's asleep, then she's totally fine if I wake her up, let her come out and then take her out of the cage. She's just great in the playpen. She doesn't come up and bite me anymore. She's a very friendly rat in terms of coming up, sitting on my knee, letting me pet her some. She's a very nice rat. I mean, I actually took her a few months back to see some middle schoolers with her sister Latte, and it was amazing. Like, she was in her travel cage. There were kids sticking fingers right in her face, and she was totally fine. She was just licking them, and she was accepting melon and other treats from them, and just being a totally sweet rat. So yeah, they can definitely change for the better. That's basically all I for you today. The last thing I want to say is that if you have an aggressive rat, you never want to punish them for it. I mean, they're not going to learn anything from you punishing them. All you're going to do is scare the rat even more and make them even more likely to bite you. So by instead changing your rat's base emotion or base feelings towards you being in the cage or next to them or touching them or whatever, you can effectively change their reactions to humans in general, which will lead to a friendlier rat. I guess the only other thing that I didn't touch upon was should you wear gloves if you have an aggressive rat? And my answer to this question is, well, personally, I wouldn't. And the reason I wouldn't is because rats are actually more likely to bite fabric. And not only that, 
but rats generalize really poorly, which means that your rats could be totally fine with sitting in your gloved hands, and then you switch to bare hands and suddenly they're biting you super hard again because they just don't associate the hand without the glove with the hand with the glove. So yeah, if you really need to wear gloves, if it makes you feel safe, if it gives you a reason to interact with your rat and it's the only way that you can do it, then yeah, go ahead and wear gloves, but just be aware that they're probably not going to give you a long-term solution. You will at some point need to take them off. And as long as you take precautions when you don't have on the gloves, you shouldn't be getting bit. I mean, the whole point of this is to avoid getting bit and to help your rat start to associate you with positive things so that they don't feel the need to bite you. Okay everyone, that's basically all I have today and I just want to thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. I know it's really difficult to deal with biting rats like this, so I commend everyone who is trying to help out their rats. And other than that, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and I hope to see you next time. Bye!